लेट्स एडवाइज ए एस टू बेटा पेज नंबर फोर पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट वन पॉइंट टू गैस हाँ वन सॉरी अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड टू बेटा वैल्यूएशन ऑफ इन्वेंट्रीज नाउ द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी कवर अंडर दिस अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द वर्ड इन्वेंट्रीज इन्वेंट्रीज कवर assets which are held for sale in the ordinary course of business that is finished goods or stock in trade anything that is in the process of being converted into that finished product that is work in progress or the third part it is in the form of materials or consumables that will be utilized as such better for the purpose of manufacturing activity this includes raw materials tools and consumables so we include finished goods we include stock in trade work in progress tools and consumables raw materials this standard does not apply to construction work in progress does not apply to service work in progress shares or debentures held as stock in trade and then beta agricultural products forest products livestock mineral resources these products are usually valued at nrv but if at all you are a dealer in agricultural product beta as2 is still applicable it is not applicable to the producer of these products not to the subsequent dealers subsequent dealers ko beta as2 still applies construction work in progress service work in progress may be better that construction work in progress itself is not covered but then if you are holding any other materials as such guys for the purpose of that contract just if you still have stocks of cement sand i said as2 is still applicable after that beta i spoke about measurement criteria initially any asset is always recognized at cost subsequent measurement will depend on how are we going to derive economic benefit from that asset so finish goods and work in progress because they are held for sale as such beta they will be directly valued at cost or nrv whichever is lower as far as raw material is concerned guys it is normally valued at cost however if the finished product in which the raw material is incorporated is expected to be sold at a loss and the replacement cost of the material is lower then the raw material beta will be valued at replacement cost this is the valuation principle for raw material so after this you should know obviously how do you compute an rb of finished product it is selling price of finished product minus selling expenses that are required better to sell the product how do you compute an rb of work in progress selling price minus selling price of the finished product minus selling expenses minus additional expenses that you are yet to incur to manufacture the product that work in progress should still be converted into finished product guys so whatever additional expenses are required to be incurred even that will be deducted to arrive at nrv of work in progress so for this you should know what is cost cost of inventory is beta is segregated into three things you have purchase price you have cost of conversion and other costs that are incurred in bringing the inventory to the present location and condition purchase price includes your basic price but are non refundable duties and taxes freight inwards unloading charges or any other expenditure that is directly attributable to bringing those inventories to their present location and condition the burden of expenditure should be on your head if the burden of expenditure is on your head and you are incurring that to bring the raw materials as such guys or stock in trade to your premises you should include that in purchase price trade discounts volume rebates if any beta should always be adjusted from the purchase price because they directly related to procurement activity cash discount if any beta will not be adjusted from the purchase price it will be separately transferred to your pnl account as income this is the first component of cost that is cost of purchase applies to raw material applies to stock and trade as far as work in progress is concerned and finished goods are concerned beta you will have the subsequent points also usme beta the first point second point beta here is conversion cost this is the cost of converting raw material into finished product so this includes all manufacturing expenses except raw material cost i also told you beta that manufacturing expenses are segregated into direct expenses and indirect expenses all indirect manufacturing expenses beta are collectively called as overheads so conversion cost me beta they will directly tell us what are all the expenses that are related as such guys to manufacturing of the product you supposed to include all of those manufacturing expenses the only point that i told you better to remember separately is fixed manufacturing overheads 
fixed manufacturing overheads because they do not change with the change in production activity guys you will have to allocate that to the products that are being manufactured you will divide it by normal capacity or actual capacity whichever is higher the objective is to ensure that you get a lower cost per unit that is why you divide it by actual or normal capacity whichever is higher iske alawa beta at this point we've also learned about joint products and by products in case a company is jointly manufacturing products beta you will not be able to separately identify what is the cost that is being incurred in respect of each joint product that is why you will have to allocate the total cost that is incurred to all the joint products being manufactured on a reasonable basis and that reasonable basis is sales value of those joint products in case there is a by product in case there is scrap whatever is the nrv of this by product whatever is the nrv of scrap should be reduced from the overall cost incurred and the balance cost of south beta will be allocated to the main products in the ratio of sales value remember by product can never have a profit the fact that you are valuing by product at nrv that means by product ka whatever is the sales value minus selling expenses as such guys and for the processing cost if any that is the amount that you are going to deduct from the overall cost incurred i told you purposely in the examination they will give you profit of by product ignore that is not relevant are we clear about this guys iske baad mein beta i said if there is any other expenditure that is attributable to bringing the inventories to the present location and condition even those expenses beta will be included in the valuation of inventory they've given an example of designing cost here all right guys then comes exclusions what should not be included in the cost of inventories there are four things beta that are given any amount of abnormal wastages whether there is abnormal loss of raw material abnormal losses of wages guys anything should not be included in the valuation of inventories storage cost should not be included unless a storage is required for the purpose of manufacturing of the products by default i told you beta once the finished products are manufactured whatever storage cost that you incur are considered to be distribution expenditure they are not manufacturing cost then guys any amount of admin overhead selling and distribution overheads also should not be included in the valuation of inventories iske alawa there is another call called other point beta called as interest i said interest is normally not included in the valuation of inventories unless it is permitted as per as 16 what is that we are going to learn under accounting standard 16 this is about the exclusions this will tell us what is the cost every time raw material is produced every time finished goods are manufactured but is there a compulsion beta that the cost per unit should remain constant throughout the year every time you buy raw material it can be at different prices every time you are undertaking manufacturing activity beta it can be at different cost this is why beta we have cost formula at this point beta i told you we have written that in the class beta we divide our inventories into two categories inventories not ordinarily interchangeable inventories ordinarily interchangeable if inventories are not ordinarily interchangeable that is where you are buying raw materials for a specific purpose beta you will directly value that raw material on the basis of specific identification method if inventories are ordinarily interchangeable we still have two options you can value inventories based on cost already incurred that is historical cost method or you can value inventories based on non historical cost methods under historical cost methods we have fifo method and weighted average method under non historical cost methods we have standard cost beta and adjusted selling price method so historical cost methods mein you should also know that an entity can either follow perpetual inventory system or periodical inventory system though it is not given here beta under the standard perpetual inventory system mein every time there is a receipt every time there is an issue beta you are supposed to make entries under periodic inventory system at the end of the month you will directly count the closing stock as such beta and make entries advantage of periodic inventory system for the purpose of solving questions is that the procedure would be less con time consuming you are directly computing weighted average price on the basis of the entire month purchases all right after this as such guys ha we spoke about nrv i said nrv as such beta can be computed on the basis of selling price at which the product was actually sold after the balance sheet date i told you that we do not close our books of accounts exactly on the balance sheet date as such beta it takes a little time to finalize the accounts by then the inventories might have been sold so you can take references to those actual selling prices to determine nrv as on the balance sheet date this valuation of inventories at cost or nrv whichever is lower should always be done on an item by item basis not on an overall basis unless beta the inventories are similar 
and they are meant to be sold together. I said if you are planning to sell all of those inventories together as such better, then you can value those inventories on the basis of that entire group. Disclosure requirement is simple, better. you have to disclose what is the accounting policy that you are following, what is the cost formula that you are using as such guys and then the total carrying amount of inventories and the classification of inventories into these categories. This is what you have covered under accounting standard 2 guys, nothing else, alright.